this is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs and today's video I'm going to show you how to make this cowl you can make it into a scarf depends on you how long you want to make it and it's called the linked up cow and the reason I called it that is because all the chains and stitches are all linked up isn't that fun well this is my version of it I'm sure it's a little different than some of the other ones that you've seen. And so what you're going to need to make this particular cowl is you're going to need four colors of any worsted weight yarn. And you're going to need about an ounce to two ounces, depending on how long you make it, of each color. And uh, we're going to be using our H hook. This is my favorite purple H hook. You're going to need a pair of scissors and a needle to work in those ends. Now I call this the linked up cowl and like I said it is a cowl because I stitched it together here but if you want to make it into a scarf you can make it as long as you want to and just stitch across the ends the same way that we're going to do this only we stitch these together to make it into a cowl. I love cowl so much that I almost always, when I make a scarf, try to make it into a cowl because, to tell you the truth, I sort of lose scarfs because I take them off too easily and I leave them on counters or in restaurants or at church or at a friend's house. But if I wear a cowl, I have a tendency to leave it on and then I don't lose it. All right, let me tell you what colors we're using today. We're going to be using I Lo um, With Love from Red Heart. And I'm going to be using this pretty red berry. We're going to use this chocolate brown. We're going to use this orange and then this beige for my four colors. These are all from Red Heart. Red Heart with Love, which is one of my favorite yarns. And um, But just so that you know, you do not have to use four colors. You can use one, two, three, or four colors however you want to. Or you can use even more colors and make it all different colors. That's the fun part about this cowl. So, you can make as many colors as there are rows. Wouldn't that be fun? So, grab your favorite colors and your H hook and let's get started. I'm going to be starting with my cranberry color. And I went ahead and I chained 35. Now the pattern calls for you to chain, I should say 36 actually. The pattern calls for you to chain 116 stitches in order to make the cowl like I made. Now, the, the way you adjust the size is you're going to need to add or subtract in increments of 10 chains because we're stitching five half double crochets and then we're chaining five. And basically the uh, section that has the five and five measures approximately three inches. So you can decide how much longer you want it by three. Three times ten. In other words, if you want it to be longer for every three inches, add ten chains. If you want it to be shorter for every three inches, subtract three chains. All right, now I only stitched 36 chains because I'm just going to show you how to make the cowl. I'm not going to make the whole cowl again. So I stitched 36 chains. And the reason we have the 16, 116 or 36 is we begin stitching in the second half double crochet from the hook. Now we're going to stitch five half double crochets. And if you don't know what a half double crochet, it's really simple. Yarn over, we're going in the second chain from the hook, go in that chain or stitch. Here's your three loops, yarn over and go through all three. That's your half double crochet. And now we're going to stitch four more for a total of five. Three, four, five. So we stitched five half double crochets. Now we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. 
Now we're going to skip the next five chains. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to put one half double crochet in the next chain. And that first one's always a little more difficult. There we go. And then we'll stitch four more half double crochets. So that's two, three, four, five. So we stitched five half double crochets, chained five, skipped five, and now we stitched five more. And this is the pattern that you'll do all the way across. Four, five. The first row for 116 chains. So we chained five, we're gonna skip five. One, two, three, four, five. Half double crochet in the next stitch or chain and then we'll stitch four more for a total of five. There we go. Three, four, five, and you can see emerging the way it's supposed to look. One, two, three, four, five. And when you get to the end of your chain, you should end up with five half double crochets on the end of each end. So we're gonna skip five, one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna have double crochet in the next stitch. Oops, I just did a double crochet, didn't I? <laughs> there we go, we'll do that again. All right. Gotta go through all three of those loops. There we go. And then we'll make five half double crochets. All right. And this is what it should look like only a whole lot longer because like I said, this is only 36 and you're gonna chain 116, but this is the first row. All right. Now we're going to stitch the second row. And you're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to chain the same number of chains as you did the first row. And what you're going to do, and don't forget, you need to tie this one off. Each row will be tied off. So we'll go ahead and cut that yarn. Like that. So there's our first row. And then I have chained 36 chains. And what you're going to do is you're gonna lay that out and then you're going to take the end of that chain and you're going to go through each one of those chain five spaces all the way down so that it looks like this. All right, then we're going to repeat what we did on the cranberry one with the brown one. It's gonna be a little tricky, but it's not hard. So we're going to put one half double crochet in the second chain from the hook, and then we'll stitch four more half double crochets. Two, three, four, five. Now your end might pull out a little bit, it's okay. You'll see it'll work out. All right, so we did our five half double crochets here. We're gonna chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Now we need to skip the next five what I do is I push it that way so I can see the end. 
one, two, three, four, five. We skip those five chains. And now we're going to stitch a half double crochet in that next chain. And this is where it gets linked up. Let's go through those. And then we'll stitch five half double crochets. We already did one. One. Actually, that was two because we already did one. So this is three. Four. Five. And now chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And see, it's linked up. And we're going to do the same thing. And I, like I said, I just push it up so that I can get to the end of the stitch here. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to stitch a half double crochet in the sixth stitch. There we go. It's a little awkward, but it works up beautifully. One, two, three, four, five. We'll pull that tail out. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to skip those five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to put one, two, three, four, five half double crochets in the last five chains. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to cut the yarn, leaving myself a little bit of a tail to weave in. And there's the second row. And uh, something that I forgot to do, at the end of this row, before I tie off, I'll go ahead and make a loop. What I do is I go ahead and I and I tie or loop on with a slip stitch to this one like that. My slip stitch didn't want to come through. There we go. There we go. And that just to me helps me keep it straight. And of course you won't have one down here, but this is the way it works. All right. So that's row two. So for row three, we're going to work row three exactly like we did row two. And for every row that you add, you're going to have to chain the 116 or the length that you want. And then begin like this again. We're going to go through the chain five spaces and you'll do that all the way across. Make sure you feed through the end the same direction every time so that all your ends are on the same end and then we begin exactly the same there we go so we're going to have double crochet in the second chain from the hook there we go got a little splitty on me there one two three, four, five. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. Just pull it up a little bit. Make sure you chain five. One, two, oops, three, four, five. And then pull it up a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. Here's six. And then we'll half double crochet in that sixth chain. There we 
one. There's the third one. Five, chain five, four, five. You can see how it's starting to really form those little chains, the little links. One, two, three, four, five. Here's the sixth. Half double crochet in that stitch. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. One, two, three, four, five chains. And then we have double crochet in the last five. Two, three, four, five. Whoop, my hook jumped out of my chain. There we go. All right, then we do the last five. One, two, three, four, five. The last one I always count up just because it's easier. Both way works. All right, and then I um, tie that off. And then I take that other end. And I just do a little slip knot just to help it stay straight. It's, it doesn't really do anything. It just is a help. Now. These two, all ends are, are apart, and that's okay, because we'll put those together at the end. And this is how you do the entire scarf. You, can, you keep continuing to chain the amount that you need, and then five, 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 just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the, the fourth row on, just so you can see the fourth color. And then I'm going to show you how to stitch the ends and connect it into a scar, uh, cow, or you can leave it open for a scarf. All right, for the fourth color, we do it exactly the same. I chained my 35. You'll chain 100 and, or 36. I keep saying 35. I chained 36. You'll need to chain 116, and then with this end, weave it through. Now I go in and out every time so that they all look the same. But you don't have to do it that way. That's just the way I like to do it. That way the curves and things are all laying the same. Okay, now we're gonna half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. So there's one, two, three, four, five, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and sort of pull that up so you can find the last stitch that you made, and then we count, one, two, three, four, five, so we're going to have double crochet in the sixth stitch, sixth chain, one, two, three, four, five, one, oops, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, and then we move down farther, one, two, three, four, five, here's our sixth stitch, There we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. 
and again you'll do this all the way down your 116 chains and then the last half double crochets one two three four five one in each of the last five chains one two three four five and cut that leaving a little bit of yarn tie that off and then we'll take the other end we'll go in that end and just pull up make a little slip knot a little slip stitch I mean um, and that just it just helps it stay straight because we're gonna have to work along both those ends now Something that I have seen is when someone makes the the um, into a scarf and it's really really long, they leave these and they don't attach them, and that looks really pretty. I've also seen them where they put a tassel on each end or a pom pom. So you can do that if you're just making a scarf. That this is such a versatile pattern, you can do a ton of things with it. And this is what it will look like with the four colors, and then you'll just continue to repeat over and over until you get the width that you want. If you want to make your, your cow the same size as mine, you can see how I did my repeats. I started with green, blue, three shades, and then green, three shades, and then ended with a green. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine rows of the cow. You can make it much wider if you want to, it's totally up to you. I didn't want mine real wide because I wanted it to be able to move around and be, uh, you know, a little bit on kind of lacy looking. But you can make it as wide as you want it. It's totally up to you. All right. So how do we finish off our scarf? Well, what you need to do, if you're going to just leave it a scarf, you can leave the ends or you can put them together. And what I did as I chose a color that I wanted to use as my uh, trim and um, so I just joined to the end and did single crochets across and for the scarf with the nine rows I did 36 single crochets across and so just you Put a, um, two in the end of each one or three, depending on how you want to do it. I kind of liked putting one, um, there we go, three in the end of each row, just so because it's kind of stretchy and you don't want it to pull tight. And so, there we go, move that back a little so you can see a little better. I just put three single crochets in the end of each row. And of course, you're going to go all the way across your nine rows. One, two. And I just pushed all my strings back because we'll go back and weave those in when we're all done. That's one thing about this scarf, as beautiful as it is, it does have all those ends that have to be tidied up. There we go. All right, one two, three. And then once I went across the bottom and I put three single crochets in the bottom of each row, then I came up the side. And you can see that I trimmed the side the same way. I put a single crochet in each half double crochet and then I put five single crochets in the, in the uh, chain five space. So what we're gonna do, this is the side. So we'll put five, get that string out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, one in each of the half double crochets. And then I just went around the chain like this. One, two, three, four, 
five. And then I went in each of the half double crochets all the way across. One, two, three, four, five. So I did five, uh, five single crochets, five, 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 all the, all the way across. And that brings us to this end. And we do it the exact same way that we did on this end. We put three single crochets in each end. One, two, three. Then we get the next little tail. One, two, three. Then we grab the next one across. <laughs> They're like trying to grab puppy tails. And it may seem like a lot of stitches to stick in that tiny little spot, but remember, this is a little bit of a stretchy cowl. We want there to be room. We don't want it to be all tight and puckered. And we want it to be the same as this end because we're going to attach. And you'll do that all the way across the bottom of your cowl unless you're leaving it open like a scarf and then you won't need to do that. Two, three. Okay, so let me turn it this way. We put three single crochets in each end here. Then we did the five in each, one in each half double crochet and then five in the five chain space across here. And then we came to the bottom and we put three single crochets in each end and now that we're on this side, we're going to do it exactly like we did this side. We're going to put one half double crochet in each, I'm sorry, one single crochet in each half double crochet across. And then we're going to put five single crochets in the five chain space. One, two, three, four, one more. And we'll do that all the way across to here. Okay, <clears throat> so we started here and we single crocheted across here. Then we single crocheted around. We single crocheted across the end and then all the way back up. And now we join to that first single crochet. Now I know it looks a little wonky because this is too small. But let me show you on this one. We did the same thing. We single crocheted down, putting three single crochets in each end. Then we single crocheted all the way around. Then we went back across and then all the way around the other end. And that just gives it a finished end. Now it does hang a little because you want it to have that linked up look. And, it, and so the last thing that we need to do is make it into a cow. And the way we do that is this is our front so we're going to turn it backwards and put those two ends together and yes we have a lot of ends to weave in there like this and then you're going to slip stitch across and that's why it was real important that you put three stitches in the end of each one so that you have the same number of stitches to single crochet across. So you'll just put your hook through. Let me, that needs a tie off right there. There we go. And then all you'll do is put your hook through the first stitch, go through the first stitch of this one, and slip stitch. Here and here, go across and slip stitch. Here and here, pull that loop through and slip stitch. Now, if you want to do it on the right side, you can, and you can do a single crochet <clears throat> if you want to. That's two ways to do it. I kind of prefer doing it a slip stitch. And remember to make it a loose slip stitch. I forgot to say that because if it's too tight, it'll be bunchy and we don't want that bunchy. And that's what you'll do all the way across and then you'll tie off. And uh, let me show you the back side. Slip stitched across. 
And then this is the front side of the back. Now, like I said, this one is only nine rows wide. And it is a little time consuming because you have to chain the long chain and then you have to weave it through and then stitch. But it makes such a unique and different sort of cowl that it's certainly worth the extra work that it takes to make. Now, if you did want to make this into a scarf, you would, you would leave that end. Um, what I would do is the end where you had the little tails, I would single crochet down across and then back up the other end and tie off and leave those little tails because they're very cute. And like I said, you can make this as long as you want it. Just make sure you chain in increments of 10. So that's how I made my linked up cow. And I hope that answered some of the questions that, I, that you had. I've been getting lots of questions about it. And uh, it's, it's, it's easy to read a pattern and get confused. And so if you can kind of see how it works, it helps a lot. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and do this one because I had lots of questions on it. So um, have fun and, and make lots of different colors. I think it would just be awesome to make this in Christmas colors, wouldn't it? Well, thanks for watching my video.